Welcome back to the second part of the Connected Conform workflow. Um, so as we left off in part one, we've uh, got our sources sequence conform down, which has populated all of the other uh, sequences in the sequence reel. It's one other thing that we can do within the conform module. Uh, we've got this new option here, which is called Create Shots Sequence. Uh, now when we do that, it creates a brand new sequence, which is the, basically the aggregate of all the other conforms that we've got um, in this sequence reel. Uh, it uses all the longest clips. The idea is being that, is that we can kind of start using this as a, a timeline that can then push effects and some other things that we'll look at in a second to all the other time, all the other sequences within this sequence reel. Um, when we do this, uh, we're going to come down to somewhere around about here because this is quite like a nice example. You can see we've got a little chain link. This means that it's now synced up uh, with all the other timelines uh, through which that shot is contained. There's some nice little features in here as well. We can come through in here. We can actually see what sequences in this sequence reel. These actually uh, common shots in this particular case are all the versions that we've got. Uh, because this is synced, it means that we can actually come through here and we can start applying uh, timeline effects, pre-processing effects. So if we do something really obvious, we're going to put color correct on. Uh, I'm going to make it a nice pink color. And you can see at the moment that only really exists um, on this particular version. Now, if we come through in here and we do a right click, uh, we can actually sync this to the other shared segments within the timeline. And you can see here that they then all dynamically update that. Uh, dynamically update that effect is actually being copied across. Uh, there's one other thing that we can also do if we just uh, kind of just undo this for a second, take those effects off. Um, in this particular case, um, we can also generate uh, batch real groups uh, automatically from this. And now uh, there's one more extra step that we need to do before uh, we commence with that. So we're going to go through here, we're going to select everything in our shot sequence. And we're going to come through and we're going to use our rename shot functionality. Now there's a new token that has been added uh, in this particular version called background index. Uh, we've already set this up uh, by default in the preferences. So this is a default pattern effects underscore background segment uh, underscore comp. And uh, what this will do is it will use the background layer to then automatically go through and uh, rename everything. Now, this is particularly useful uh, with uh, areas where you have a multi-stack like in this particular case. So you can see this is number one, two, three, four, five, etc., etc., up to 27, the shot we're on. But you can see any layers above that also take the background index name in this particular case, FX27. Now, why this is useful is because uh, we can actually come back into our conform module and, you know, if we wanted to, we could select everything and make a, a new, uh, what we call version track that contains placeholders for all these shots. Uh, we can either do it selection based. In this particular case, we are going to do it selection based instead of everything. We're going to select these and we're just going to bring up our workspace panel. And you can see here we've got these options now to create a batch group from either the whole timeline or selected shots. And we can put that in various places, desktop libraries. We're going to leave it at the default on the desktop. And if you notice up here, at the moment we just have an empty batch. Um, as soon as we do create batch group, it's going to make a new batch group uh, called FX27 on my desktop. And the other thing that is done here is within my shot sequence is that I've got a new version track that contains essentially the back layer of this. And this is also contained within all my other conform sequences within my sequence room. Okay, so we've automatically got a placeholder for this. Now, what's good about this, if we come back to here and we actually look at uh, this batch real group, is that one thing, all the metadata from this original clip has been created in the name. Um, it's taken the sources, remember we had two layers, it's taken those sources uh, into here. And the other thing that it's done is it's also created me a batch group ready for me to start working on. Uh, what's good about this is that the batch group has already got a render node on that contains all the metadata and also the ins and out points of the clip ready to drop back into the timeline. So it's a nice integrated workflow. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to sort of pin our reel down the bottom because this is the one we're going to be swapping that shot back into at some point. Uh, we're going to do a very quick uh, kind of comp on this uh, just to get things rolling. So we're just going to add a little action node. And we're just going to feed in uh, that as a background. We're going to bring uh, this in kind of here. And we're going to hook that up to our outputs. Uh, and inside this, we're just going to add a G mask and just do a very quick bit of tracking. Good luck here. Something like this, we're just going to draw a quick shape around this. It's going to be a very, very rough comp. Something like this. 
and we're going to do a quick track on this. So we're just going to track this G mask. We're going to use a G mask just to cut through so we can do uh, a quick comp through there. That's our tracking down. I'm going to look at our result view and just going to invert that mask. So now we have a, a quick sort of rough placeholder of this. Now, what's uh, good about this at this point is that when we go and render this, all the metadata from the original clip is going to be included um, into the result clip that is going to be put back on our batch desk top. And you can see here we've got our clip. It's got the same metadata and it's got the same ins and outs. Now, what this means once again is that uh, when we swap uh, this particular clip out, uh, for the new one that we've done. So if we just do uh, a swap shot here, we're just going to choose this one. And we kind of look in here, you can see that uh, this has been swapped out in this particular version, which is our shot sequence. And if we right click on that and we see all the other shared segments and we go maybe to the 20, and we're going to pop back up here, you can see that all of those have been actually populated throughout all um, the other sequences in this sequence reel. Okay, so it's a very, very quick way of starting to break out your shots automatically, batch reel groups, and then also do some kind of work on them and automatically get those to populate all your other versions. There's obviously a ton of other stuff that we can do with this, but this is just like a quick overview. Watch out after RBC for some more extensive videos.